Another ethical issue that arises uh, in the context of uh, the use of social media is both the acquisition of and the preservation of, of evidence. Um, as I indicated, the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers has published that 81% are seeing an increase in the use of social media as evidence in cases, um, and the number of Facebook users is, is plentiful. Um, I think that if you have a client who is using Facebook, or your client comes and tells you that the other side is using Facebook, or that there could be evidence there that would be relevant to your particular situation, if the person has their uh, privacy settings set to public on Facebook, so anybody who has a Facebook account can go on and look at the account uh, and get information, make a printout of what it is that the opposing party or witness in, in the case is saying, I think that that's probably fair game because they haven't made a specific you know, uh, privacy setting that would make it so that you wouldn't have access. However, there could be a situation where uh, if those privacy settings are set to, uh, to private as opposed to public, that, that would be, uh, it would be attempted, or, or you'd be tempted to be able to potentially have somebody else friend that person so that you can get information and evidence to submit in your case. Um, there was a specific <laughs> Philadelphia Bar opinion uh, that uh, was quoted in the material that talked about that, and that's called pretexting. Um, specifically, having somebody else uh, friend the person for the purpose of getting information without telling that person that that's why it was that you were actually doing it. Um, there were specific uh, uh, violations of the RPC that the, the Philadelphia Bar opinion had provided. Um, the first was, you know, uh, non-lawyer assistance. We as attorneys, of course, have a duty to be able to be sure that our non-lawyer assistants are following the rules of professional conduct, and in fact to have policies in place that will make sure that they are doing so. Uh, so having somebody else friend somebody on Facebook so that you can get information about what's going on in their lives that may be relevant to your case would be something that could be problematic. Um, and, and really, what it comes down to is misconduct. Um, the, the, the Philadelphia opinion stated that it would be deceitful to be able to have somebody else go onto Facebook uh, under the pretext that they're just trying to be a friend without disclosing to that individual that the purpose of it is to gather evidence in the case. Um, and then uh, the other RBC that would be applicable to that kind of situation would be RBC 4.1, the truthfulness and statements to others. But you know, that, that actually does you know, get to the next issue, and that is, is that let's say that you're having a conversation with your client. I mean, I personally uh, have concern about my clients sometimes and whether or not they should be using Facebook if, if they're not using an exercise of proper judgment. Again, clients like to vent, and a lot of people will send things out onto the internet and vent in ways that potentially could be very damaging to their cases. Um, that does raise another issue, though, is that let's say that you're having that discussion with your client, and um, they disclose to you that they do have information on Facebook that could be detrimental. Let's say you start asking them, well, what, what is that on there? Well, there might be some pictures on there of me um, drinking alcohol. Okay. Um, what, what other information you know, could be out there? And usually if they're disclosing that information to you, they're going to be concerned about it. So then the question becomes, what do you do about that? Can you advise your client to be able to actually take down information that is uh, on Facebook? Um, I think that, uh, that that could be an issue. Uh, in fact, uh, RPC 3.4a, Fairness uh, to Opposing Party and Counsel, states that a lawyer should not unlawfully obstruct another party's access to evidence or unlawfully alter, destroy, or conceal a document or other material having potentially evidentiary value. And that a lawyer shall not uh, assist another person to, to do such an act. So I think there's a real, a real problem with respect to that. Well, I just want to go back. You indicated, if I go back one time, you indicated it would be unethical to ask somebody, to friend somebody for the purpose of getting information um, on somebody else's page. I think we've all had the experience where some, well, people who are getting divorced tend to have common friends, at least I hope they do. Uh, they also tend to have common Facebook friends. We've all been involved where a friend comes to you and comes and says, hey, I saw this on your wife's Facebook page and provides it. I'm assuming that's okay because no one's deceiving anybody. I would agree with that assessment. Is, is that it's, it's very different if somebody is a friend and they say, you know, I'm willing to provide this information. I'm a friend of the opposing party or the witness that, that is, is, uh, has evidence that you would want to use. Um, and I think the distinction, the distinction there is, is that if the lawyer is doing so for the purpose of obtaining the information, and that's the sole purpose of doing so, that's different than having a friend, for example, who would be asking to friend the person on Facebook, you know, or was already a friend of the person on Facebook that has uh, evidence that they can provide to you. I see nothing wrong with the scenario that you described. Question over here. 
I just want to tell the people that we recently had a case where we had to subpoena Facebook and we got that um, information returned to us in a nice short time frame and we have what we needed to proceed. But um, we are getting in the day and age where if I'm in a law, you need some kind of a policy or statement. You need to pull one of those clients not to destroy their family on that and by going out and putting it on the public media. I, I would agree with that, and I think that certainly there are there are discovery tools that we have to be able to use to get information um, without doing things like pretexting. Um, and, and I think that that's what you know, as a diligent lawyer, that you would do. You would use interrogatories, or you potentially would you know uh, issue subpoenas to Facebook or any of these other social media sites to get information that would be uh, necessary for your case. I think, I think the flip side of the uh, RBC you have up right there on the screen is that. You've got to be uh, competently advising your client, and, and, and we've made it almost part of, a, of an initial consultation to find out if there's a MySpace or it used to be MySpace now it's Facebook page, and find out if there's anything bad on there. And if you, I think if you don't tell if you don't tell your client to be careful with their Facebook and get out get, take down damaging information, I don't think you're I don't think you're really destroying or concealing a document. Is that uh, rule would uh, that that rule would cover, but I think your your client then comes back to you later and says, "Why don't you tell me this is going to happen?" It's like it's like if, you, if you've got a client who's using drugs, or or you think they use drugs, and you don't tell them somewhere along the line, somebody's going to ask you to take a UA. That seems like perfectly good advice to give a client. Don't don't do drugs. And the same thing is don't put pictures of yourself doing drugs on Facebook if there are any <laughs> and, and I agree with that wholeheartedly, and I think that that's kind of part of you know, uh, what, what I hope to impress upon you is, is that because of the prevalent use of these social media sites, you really should have that discussion with your client. You know, are you using Facebook? Do you have a Facebook page? Are you using MySpace? What information are you putting on there? I personally, again, will say, you know, I would advise you just don't use social media sites right now while you're going through this divorce procedure. Um, I, I think that there's such a, a potential for uh, problems in your case, and we always kick ourselves when a client comes to you and says something that potentially that they did that you, you wouldn't have been able to prevent. Um, I would like to talk about the first part of your, your, your comment and question, though, and that is, is that there's a distinction between when somebody goes on and they have a Facebook account and they have their settings set to public as opposed to private. Um, you, I think that there's no issue with respect to going on to Facebook and putting your settings to private and making it so that people who you don't want to see it can't see it. I do think that there's another issue though with respect to advising a client potentially to alter or, or, or to delete all the information on Facebook pursuant to this particular RPC. So I would, I would just raise that issue um, as well. Um, there were some questions here, and I'd like to turn the floor over to, to Judge Price to be able to, to, uh, to uh, give this part of the presentation at this point in time, and, and I thank you for, for uh, coming.